Sona is the Masia's leading virtuoso of the strings itwall, communicating solely through her elegant chords and lively areas. Her refined demeanor has won the favor of the nobility, though some believe her enchanting melodies may actually channel magic, a forbidden practice in Demacia. Though silent to most, she is understood by those close to her, using her harmonies not only to heal wounded allies, but also to eliminate unsuspecting foes. Welcome, Lord Lovers, to another deep dive into the rich world of Runeterra. I'm Line Drunk and today we are unraveling the fascinating story of one of Demacia's most mysterious champions, Sona, the maven of the strings. From her origins in Ionia to her ties with House Puvel and her connections with other iconic characters, there's a lot to explore. So sit back, relax and let's dive into the lore. Sona has no recollection of her biological parents. As a baby, she was discovered abandoned at the doorstep of an Ionian orphanage, placed atop an ancient instrument and closed in a beautifully crafted case of unknown origin. Sona was an unusually calm child, always quiet and content. Her caretakers believed she would be adopted quickly, but they soon realized that what they thought was extraordinary tranquility was actually an inability to speak or make any sound at all. Sona remained at the orphanage into her teenage years, silently watching as potential adopters overlooked her. During this period, the caretaker sold her unique instrument to eager collectors, intending to build a trust for her. However, for a variety of strange and unforeseen reasons, the instrument was repeatedly returned or mysteriously reappeared outside the orphanage. When a wealthy Demacian woman named Lestara Buvel heard about the instrument, she immediately traveled to Ionia. After seeing the instrument, she wordlessly explored the orphanage, eventually stopping outside Sona's room. Without hesitation, Lestara adopted her and made a generous donation for the instrument. Under Lestara's guidance, Sona discovered a profound connection with the instrument, which Lestara referred to as an itwal. In Sona's hands, the itwal produced sounds that stirred or calmed the hearts of those around her. Within months, Sona was performing with the enigmatic itwal to sold-out audiences, playing as though she were plucking the heartstrings of her listeners, effortlessly evoking emotions without a single written note. Secretly, she discovered it was powerful and deadly potential, using its vibrations to cut objects from a distance. She practiced this skill in private, mastering it in preparation for a time when a performance might require the full range of her talents. Before we continue, just a quick reminder, if you are enjoying this journey through the world of Runeterra, don't forget to hit that like button, it really helps the channel and lets me know you want more lore content just like this. In this story one last show, we find Sona, who had always been attuned to the subtleties of the world around her, approaching the Argentine Inn when a wave of nostalgia hit her like a familiar melody. The scent of hay, strawberries and sturdy wood stirred memories of days long gone, days when life in Demacia was simpler, happier, but those days felt like they belonged to another world now, distant and out of reach. As she stepped into the courtyard, she spotted an old friend, Itra, emerging from the inn's doorway. Sona's heart skipped a bit. Had time changed everything, but Itra's eyes widened in recognition, and with a joyful shriek, she rushed forward to embrace Sona. Relief washed over her, some things it seemed never changed. You got my letter, Itra explained, holding her tight. Sona nodded, and as Itra pulled back to study her, she noticed the weariness in Sona's eyes. They had been apart for too long. Sensing Sona's unease, Itra switched to the rough sign language they had created over years of friendship. All is well? she asked her hands moving with the grace of a long-forgotten dance. Sona replied with a practiced ease, the comfort of being understood by someone who knew her so well. Yet, of course, she sighed, even if words weren't entirely true. I missed you terribly. She kept her movements slow, out of sight, to avoid drawing attention. How long will you stay this time? Itra asked. As long as I can, Sona replied. You know I could never resist an empty stage. Itra grinned in response. Tonight would be special. As the sun dipped below the horizon, Sona took her place at the forefront of the inn's makeshift stage, a simple raised platform in a converted barn. The first few spectators trickled in, familiar faces among them. They came prepared for an evening of music with flagons of wine and cheese wrapped in cloth. The Itwal, her instrument of choice, sat gleaming on its stand, its burnished gold polished to perfection. 
Sona glanced at her companions on stage, Cole keeping beat on the goatskin drums and Idra, whose voice would soon join Sona's melodies, smooth and clear as water. Together they fell into a familiar rhythm and the crowd swelled as more people gathered, drawn by the music. But tonight the air was heavy with tension. Demacia had recently lost its king and the country was in turmoil, divided by a year of bloodshed and betrayal. As Sona played, her thoughts were interrupted by the sight of four hooded figures slipping into the back of the audience. Their dark blue cloaks weren't alarming by themselves, but one of them tilted their head. Sona caught a glint of gold, a mask. Mace seekers. Sona's heart raced. She could feel the anise ripple to Itra, but neither of them dared to acknowledge it. They had to keep performing, maintaining the facade. The next song was a solo piece. As Itra and Cole quietly retreated backstage, Sona prepared herself. The audience shifted in their seats, ready for what was to come. They all knew this piece. It was one of Sona's own creations, a melody that had no name but was etched in the hearts of those who had heard it. Her fingers brushed the strings and the air hung still, pregnant with anticipation. Then, with the first note, the music began. Her fingers moved with the grace of fireflies, the song building and fading, twisting and turning like the emotions it evoked. But soon, something more emerged in the music, notes that shouldn't have been possible, layers that added depth of complexities beyond the ordinary. The it wall had awakened. To the audience it was just music, but to Sona, the air was alive with long, twisting illusions rising from the strings, visible only to her. The instrument had chosen its target, a grieving widow in the back of the room, lost in the memories of her late husband. The ritual resonated with the deep warmth of his voice, conjuring images of his weathered face, the crinkle of his smile. But as the music continued, the image shifted, a reminder of his recent passing and the hard harvest that followed. The Itwald whispered the man's final song to Sona, and without pause, she wove it into her own melody. The widow's eyes widened in recognition, tears streaming down her cheeks. Sona powered her heart into the music, offering comfort, strength and solace through her notes. But as the song reached its crescendo, something went wrong. The illusions that had been her secret began to spill out, no longer contained. The Mexicans had noticed. They rose from their seats, moving down the aisles toward her. Panic surged within Sona, she had lost control. The crowd was still entraced, oblivious to the danger. Sona took a step back, her mind racing. She had to escape. She bolted, her skirts gathered in one hand, the it while following her as if alive. She burst through the back of the barn, into the dark alley beyond, only to find herself cornered by more massacres. They surrounded her, blaze drawn, their intentions clear. Sona backed against the inn's wall, her fingers finding the it wall once more. I hope Itra ran, she thought as the instrument began to glow. With a powerful strum, she unleashed a violent burst of magic. The air crackled with golden energy and the mage seekers were caught in its troll. They twisted and contorted, their bodies moving like puppets on strings, forced to dance against their will. Their screams echoed in the night, but Sona couldn't stop. She had to make them hurt to ensure they would never remember Itra, never come after her. Finally, with one last resonant chord, the mage seekers collapsed to the ground, unconsciousness and forgetful. Sona stood there, her heart pounding, before slipping away into the woods, disappearing into the silence, leaving nothing but the echoes of her music behind. Sona's connections with those around her are deeply rooted in both her past and present, with bones that reflect her quiet strength and the care she gives to those she loves. Sona is the beloved adoptive daughter of Lord Barrett and Lady Lestara Buvel of House Buvel. Her adoption brought her into a family that cherishes and protects her, especially given the dangers she faces as a magical being in a land where magic is taboo. Her bond with her mother, Lestara, is particularly strong. Lestara has been a guiding force in Sona's life, helping her harness the power of the Itwal and shielding her from the mage seekers who hunt those like her. Sona is also close to her adoptive sister, Kahina, sharing a deep familiar connection that reinforces her place within House Buvel. During one of her returns to Ionia, Sona crossed paths with Irelia, the famed defender of her homeland. The meeting between these two women, both shaped by the struggles and wars of their respective lands, speaks to a shared understanding of duty and the burdens carried by those who stand against oppression. Before his exile, Sona met Tariq, the shield of Valoran. Their encounter occurred in a time when Tariq was still finding his path, 
and though their meeting was brief, it was meaningful. Both Sona and Tarek share a connection to the celestial and the mystical, even if their paths diverged afterward. Sona also journeyed with the Archmage Rise during the events of the Call of Power. Together they traveled to the Hirana Monastery in the aftermath of the Naxian invasion of Ionia. Along the way they were ambushed by the Navori Brotherhood, a confrontation that showcased Sona's resolve and willingness to fight for the safety of her homeland alongside one of Runeterra's most powerful mages. Thanks for joining me lore lovers on this deep dive into Sona's story. If you enjoyed this video make sure to like, share and subscribe to the channel so you never miss an episode. And if you are hungry for even more lore discussions, join our discord community, it's the perfect place to chat with fellow lore lovers. Until next time, keep exploring the lore.